Welcome back to New Mexicast, everyone. Before the break, I introduced you to Stephen and Gabrielle Falk. It was part one of a four-part series about a Holocaust survivor. Now on to part two. Now please keep in mind that the intro you're about to see was shot five years ago and a lot has changed in my life since then. For one thing, we've added another child to our family, and for another, we have lost my beloved mother-in-law. She passed away from cancer last year. But one thing that has not changed is that this is an inspiring story which I am delighted to share with all of you. It is chilly and windy here in New Mexico, but it's also still sunny. This is New Mexicast. Welcome back to New Mexicast, everyone. I'm Rosalinda Roman, returning after a bit of a hiatus for the holidays and my daughter's birthdays. Happy second and fourth birthdays to my little sweethearts. Can you believe that baby that you saw in the end of trail episode number one, the first episode of New Mexicast? She is now two years old. I know, where has the time gone? It is so crazy. Well, I certainly enjoyed the break and enjoyed the time with my family, but I'm anxious to get back to this episode. If you haven't had a chance to watch the story that was posted in December, that's episode number 14, please go back and do that because this is part two of that series. In it, I introduce you to a man named Stephen Falk. He is an incredible person who has been combing the globe to try to pull together the scattered pieces of his family's history. The reason it's so scattered is because many of his family members are Holocaust victims. And so this week, I wanna introduce you to more of his family, specifically his mother, Gabrielle. Now I happened upon this story because my mother-in-law asked me to document her friend Gabrielle's stories about surviving the Holocaust. Throughout that two-day, four-hour interview, Gabrielle talked a lot about what she called a series of lucky breaks. Well, I think some of the luck rubbed off on me, to be honest, because not only have I had the challenge of pulling these pieces together and telling this amazing story, but I also had the chance to get to know an incredible family. This episode and New Mexicast theme song are brought to you by Dorian Spencer. Some of you may get lucky enough to catch him busking around New York City, but fortunately for the rest of us, his newly released Stone to Stone CD is now available at DorianSpencer.com. My cousin Claire sent hers, and I think Ulla gave me hers too. As the son of a Holocaust survivor, Stephen Falk has spent years contacting archives and distant relatives, searching for information on the fate of family members. Well, some of it was inherited from people who had already done the work before, and also tracking down other cousins and asking them what they, what they know about earlier generations and, or, or just other parts of the family. So uh, I've been adding pieces from whatever sources I can find. A few of those sources simply add flavor to his search. Like this 1950 recording of his uncle Dota Conrad singing Schubert's Die Winterreise. And sometimes his personal treasure hunt leads to unexpected gems, like this home movie of his great uncle Hermann Freund on the beach in 1934. Although he had no children of his own, he had legally adopted the mother of the children in this film, making him a sort of surrogate uncle to them. Now, as adults, they cherish these reminders of their beloved uncle. But these sweet summer scenes also offer a disturbing omen of what was to come. Throughout the film, Nazi swastika flags can be seen flapping in the breeze nearby, a symbol of the anti-Semitism that destroyed so many lives. Ten years after this film was taken, Dr. Hermann Freund himself was murdered by the Nazis at Auschwitz. Hermann's brother, Dr. Walter Freund, survived the death camps, and his grandson, Stephen, who is now working to reconstruct their family tree, was born on what would have been his great-uncle Hermann's 80th birthday, a coincidence that his mother, Gabrielle, finds significant. Steve was born on the 11th of August, which was the birthday of my my father's youngest brother. So each, each birthday has a special meaning. 
Throughout her 85 years, Gabrielle's life has been filled with intriguing coincidences like this, literally starting with the day she was born. April 20th, which turns out to also be the birthday of Hitler. What do you think about that? Well, it was interesting because as a Jewish child, I, in the beginning, was taking part in the Saturday morning class, which was um, more or less Nazi training for the children. And so one of the first questions that this teacher asked was, Wann war unser Führer geboren? <laughs> And so, nobody else raised their hand, so I did. Because she knew Adolf Hitler's birthday and didn't look Jewish to that particular teacher, he took kindly to her. So Gabrielle Freund had no idea how drastically her life was about to change. I remember taking a walk with my father in 1932, and it was snowing, and there were all these huge posters with the candidate's name. I asked him about each one of them. And so he mentioned something about the anti-Semitism of the Hitler party. And I said, well, but that would be terrible. He said, yeah, but he will never get elected. Which gives you already an idea about how my father felt about things. An encounter with a new friend was Gabrielle's first indication that things weren't as rosy as her father believed. We talked about books and math and stuff. I mean, I enjoyed her very much. And so one time I asked her to come and visit me after school, and she was looking, we were both looking forward to it. And on the day she was going to come, she told me at recess in the morning that she wouldn't be allowed, we couldn't come, because her parents said they were worried somebody might see her walk into our house. And so I came home and I was in tears and I told my mother, and my mother said they had real, that my parents had realized that things were going to become very difficult in school. The solution for many Jewish families facing such anti-Semitism was to send their children to boarding schools in adjacent countries, which ultimately still placed those children within the Fuhrer's murderous grasp. But as luck would have it, Gabrielle's parents, Walter and Eleanor Freund, weren't succeeding in their search for a suitable boarding school. And so they had gone to Czechoslovakia, which had good schools, and hadn't found anything. And the next trip was to Holland, where they didn't find anything. And then they went to Switzerland, and after having looked at a couple of boarding schools in Switzerland, my mother had this epiphany that she, there was something about boarding schools that she couldn't see for her children. And so she talked about that they were sitting in the waiting hall in the Zurich train station. And a woman who sat a few feet away got up and um, t started telling them about the school, which was a cantonal school in Togen up in Selle near St. Gaul and the teachers and some of the village people took boarding students, but then they went to a regular school. And so my parents went there directly and um, found that the music teacher and his sister had one of these pensions and that they accepted boys and girls. So we got signed up. It was a decision that most likely kept Gabrielle and her brother Andreas alive. To send my brother and me to school in Switzerland. You know, if it had been Czechoslovakia or Holland, right. I wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> and what this was the first of a number of incredibly lucky breaks. Some more of those lucky breaks, like the ones that kept her parents alive throughout the Holocaust, will be the subject of the next episode of New Mexicast. I'm Rosalinda Roman.
Part three of the Falk family story will be posted here on New Mexicast in two weeks, so be sure to check back then, or you could subscribe to the New Mexicast. It is totally free. You can do it in iTunes or on NewMexicast.com, and that way you'll get an update when I do post that next episode. How else are you going to find out what role Swiss chocolate plays in helping a family member escape the Holocaust? Yeah, I know it's a big tease, but I want you to come back and see the rest of this story. It really is quite amazing, if you ask me. Oh, and by the way, I wanted to let those of you who are on Facebook know that the New Mexicast has joined the social networking addiction, I mean revolution, and we are now officially on Facebook. So all you have to do is search for New Mexicast in Facebook. You'll find our Facebook page, and then I hope you'll become a fan. And that way I can keep you updated on new developments. Thanks to all of you who are watching, and I will see you in two weeks. And luckily here on New Mexicast, the TV show, you don't have to wait two weeks for parts three and four of this four-part series. Just tune in this time next week for the conclusion of Gabrielle Falk's Holocaust survivor story. Until then, be sure to stick around until after the credits for the bloopers and outtakes. Hopefully they'll make you smile, kind of like you guys all make me smile with all of your kindness and support of New Mexicast. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Rosalinda Roman. Like a dream I had. New Mexico's theme song is New Mexico by Dorian Spencer. Additional support for New Mexico is provided by. <laughs> but it's also still sunny. But it's also still sunny. But it's also still sunny. So bright now. That's what I get it for bragging about the sunshine. <laughs>